Well, good morning. Let me start out by uh, saying thank you to uh, Ladder 86, Rescue 5, uh, everybody that works in this house for their hospitality. Uh, I was just in the kitchen and I put myself in harm's way. Uh, in case some of that food was poisonous, I ate it so they wouldn't have to. They do have a sign in there, which I love. It says, as to dinner, you have two choices. Take it or leave it. I took it. So when you guys go back into the kitchen, you will find a lot less food than when you started. Thank you very much. My waistline did not need it, but it was really good. Um, we're here to talk about uh, somebody that gave us a weekend to remember, and that was Irene. Uh, one, it was a storm that obviously could have turned out far worse. Uh, the storm isn't behind us yet. Uh, there still are thousands of New Yorkers still without power, including some 7,000 customers here on Staten Island. Uh, but last night, that was something like 25,000, so Con Ed really is making a big difference. And the FDNY and the NYPD have been very helpful in blocking off areas where there are down power lines. If you see a down power line, please don't go near it. Uh, we just don't need a tragedy. Uh, Con Ed will come eventually and fix it. They're working as fast as they can. And I think in a day uh, so that all of the people will be back having power. But the most important thing is that uh, nobody gets hurt. Uh, we have a big cleanup job ahead of us. There's no question about that. And you know, our city did miss the worst of Irene. Many of our neighbors upstate weren't as fortunate. They've experienced serious flooding. Our hearts go out to them. And that's the reason why, if you look at the MTA system, uh, the subways, which I took this morning, are back working. Uh, certainly all of them probably by the end of the day and all the buses. Uh, I hope not too far behind will be the Long Island Railroad. But Metro North has enormous amount of damage going further north. There's a lot of flooding up there still. And uh, so uh, if you have friends up there, if there's anything we can do to help, uh, tell them I put a call into the governor this morning. Uh, I didn't get to talk to him. I talked to the secretary and said, tell him the city would be happy to offer anything if uh, we need it. But I think uh, the governor's got a good handle on it, and he probably doesn't need help from us. What he needs is the water to slowly recede and to everybody up there to do what New Yorkers did, pull together, and I think they will do that. Um, there is something that New Yorkers can do, however, <coughs> to help get us through this and keep our safety, uh, city safe now, and that is donate blood. Uh, Irene disrupted blood collection throughout the metropolitan area, and uh, with another three-day holiday weekend coming up, the supply will get even lower. So please, if you can, call the New York Blood Center. Their phone number is 1-800-933-2566. <clears throat> That's 1-800-933-2556, or you can visit www.nybloodcenter.org. <clears throat> now, we've come to Staten Island today to update you on the city's recovery, but also <clears throat> to say thank you to the people who did some extraordinary work to keep Staten Island as safe. The Firefighters and Engine Company 166 and Ladder Company 86. Uh, yesterday, about 8.30 a.m., just as Irene was making landfall, they rescued more than 60 adults, including one elderly woman, <coughs> woman <coughs> using a respirator, and also three children from their homes on three blocks in the Bull's Head area of central Staten Island. Now, this is not a low-lying area. Residents were not <coughs> under <coughs> an evacuation order. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd be fine. Should have had Lance a taster. Oh, great. Sure. Could have been. Yeah, can I? Do I need a taster here? Or? <laughs> What's the food? <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Um, <coughs> but Irene's heavy, <coughs> heavy rains did cause Willowbrook Park Pond to overflow its banks. Neighborhood streets were flooded <coughs> with five to six feet of water, and water was flooding into the lower floors of some two-story homes, which incidentally were also losing their electrical power. Floodwaters were still rising when the firefighters from these companies arrived with three heavy-duty inflatable rafts powered by outdoor outboard motors. Each raft holds five to six people. <coughs> and firefighters made repeated passes down the street and rescued those in harm's way calmly, quickly, and safely, as you would expect them to do. The FDNY made similar waterborne rescues in other parts of our city, 
including Broad Channel, Howard Beach, and the Rockaways. Now, we don't have a full count, but I think it's safe to say that firefighters <coughs> rescued more than 100 people in our city in this way and also rescued motorists stranded in flooded autos. There's a reason <coughs> why New Yorkers call the FDNY the bravest. And on behalf of 8.4 million New Yorkers, I want to express my gratitude to the members of Engine 166 and Ladder 86, and also to all the other members of the fire department. You wonder why they train all the time? Well, you saw it yesterday, and uh, that's why they'll keep training. This is the greatest fire department in the world. They're ready to meet every emergency, most of which they couldn't predict. You never know what you're going to find when you answer a call, but when they get there, they have the equipment, they have the leadership, and most of all, they have the training, and they have the courage to go into harm's way when the rest of us are going out of harm's way. And so uh, I did want to say thank you to them. Um, now, it's not just the FDNY that uh, was great yesterday. Uh, many New Yorkers went above and beyond the call of duty. The NYPD did its usual extraordinary work. Uh, all the first responders and emergency management personnel who developed, trained for, and then flawlessly executed our coastal storm plan, which we wrote back in the year 2006, deserve a great deal of credit. The volunteers who staffed our more than 80 evacuation centers and emergency shelters, including many teachers, uh, and Department of Education staff. And let me add that there remain about 1,000 New Yorkers at 25 shelters, which is down from a peak of nearly 9,500 evacuees on Saturday night and Sunday morning. The workers in frontline agencies like the Department of Transportation, Buildings, and Environmental Protection deserve our thanks, and the 311 operators who handled an incredibly incredible volume of nearly a quarter of a million calls on Sunday, more than 10 times the normal load. Uh, thanks also go to the bus drivers, cab and livery dr car drivers, and others who drove New Yorkers to the shelters, the people who went door to door in low-lying areas covered by the evacuation order to get the emergency message out uh, and, uh, and urge people to leave, the elected officials who mobilized their offices to help us communicate urgent messages to New Yorkers, the EMS medical and health professionals who carried out the incredibly well done evacuation of more than 7,000 hospital patients and residents of nursing homes and other residential facilities in low-lying coastal areas, and the MTA workers who prevented Irene from devastating our mass transit system and then got the system back up and running this morning. And I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Jay Walder, who leads them, and all of them. Had they not moved all of that equipment, it, they wouldn't have been able to get it back this morning. And uh, fortunately, they had the foresight to do it. Uh, in fact, this morning, when I took the subway to work, I had a chance to say thank you to a couple of them who were uh, uh, on the subway platform when I got on the, my subway train. The uh, fact of the matter is it's a long list, but that's why things work in this city, because everybody works together. And uh, nobody should be surprised about that. We train all the time, and uh, we talk about it. And every day, you see uh, interagencies like the fire department and the police department showing up at a couple of hundred different times. People need help every day in this city. And they do it professionally, and they do it uh, with great understanding of the needs of an enormously diverse city. Let me talk for a few seconds about the MTA in terms of our daily update. Subway system came back to life even earlier been announced with a 6 a.m. start time. I was having dinner last night when Jay Walder called me and said he thought they could make that, and it did put a smile on my face uh, because I was dreading getting to work without the subway, but fortunately uh, I didn't have to do that. And people on the subway car this morning all had a big smile on their faces. They were relieved. The MTA is now running service across almost the entire system, including the Rockaways. The bus system is also in great shape. The MTA is reporting normal, local, limited, and express bus service in all five boroughs uh, with detours where road conditions are not passable. Uh, here on Staten Island, things are also looking up. The MTA is reporting delays and detours on five bus routes, but that's all. All of the buses are running close to schedule, and the Staten Island Railroad resumed normal service at midnight last night and is running well today, as is the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, things are a little more difficult uh, getting into the city from the suburbs. The Long Island Railroad has restored services, but only on its major lines with some delays and cancellations. Uh, they are making progress, however, in getting it all back. Uh, there is currently no service, as I said before, on Metro North, 
Uh, hopefully some service will be stored by this afternoon, but that was the part of the MTA system that suffered the most damage and uh, gives them the most challenges to get everything back to work. And uh, keep in mind, they want to make sure they do that without any of their employees getting injured. Um, the uh, storm areas north of the city, uh, all, lots of other services still aren't working. That's where the most trees came down. That's where the most power outages are. Finally, New Yorkers who rely on Accessoride should know that they will be back to normal service this afternoon. Uh, these vehicles spent the morning helping evacuees return home. Uh, let me update you on a few other elements of our storm recovery, starting with electrical service. As of 10 a.m. today, there are about 38,000 customers in the city without power. Uh, that's uh, half of what there were last night. More than half of these 38,000 were in Queens, and about 7,000 were here on Staten Island. Con Ed tells us that they have 280 crews working in New York City and Westchester County to restore power. Um, and if you're without power, let me just warn you, please don't use generators or grills indoors. The result could be carbon monoxide poisoning that could kill you. And it's a good time to remind yourself also, make sure your carbon monoxide and fire detectors are working. Uh, those will save your lives. It will let our first responders, the fire department in most cases, uh, get to the fire if it's there, keep quicker and uh, save your life and uh, keep min minimize property damage. So generators, uh, outdoors, and uh, candles, keep them away from windows and vents. We've also received reports of more than something close to 2,000 trees downed or split or uprooted. Uh, roughly half of them are in Queens. Uh, Parks Department, forestry crews and contractors and members of the FDNY are working on them. Uh, let me remind New Yorkers, it really is a bad idea to cut down or remove trees yourself. Leave it to the professionals. Uh, you cut a tree and all of a sudden it snaps in a direction you hadn't counted on. Our professionals know what they're doing and chainsaws are dangerous and trees are dangerous. Uh, if it took a little while longer to get that tree out of there but it was done safely, so much the better. Uh, I'm happy to report that none of the trees on the 9-11 memorial were affected by the storm and we remain on course to open the memorial uh, in time for the 10th anniversary. I drove by it this morning and it seemed to me there was a full complement of construction workers working not just on the memorial but on the buildings around it. Sanitation crews are, are out across the city cleaning debris and be, um, uh, beginning some uh, actual uh, trash collection. Uh, they removed more than 50 truckloads of sand from the streets in the Rockaways last night. Uh, all Monday refuse and recycling should be completed on the overnight shift tonight. Street cleaning rules will remain suspended for religious observances until Friday. Uh, New Yorkers should throw away any food, including packaged food, that was touched by floodwaters. Please, it's, uh, you don't want to get sick. Now, floodwaters may contain sewage, so it really is important to disinfect contaminated items and keep them from coming into contact with the sewage while you clean. And after a flood, it's important to clean and dry affected items as quickly as possible to prevent mold growth, which also can ruin a lot of things. Uh, before turning things over to our other speakers, let me add this. I did want to thank New Yorkers who heeded the evacuation order, who helped their neighbors during this trying weekend. Uh, you have a lot to be proud of. So on that note, let me turn the floor over to somebody who's been cited for heroic rescues five times during his NYPD career. By Commissioner Sal Cassano. Sal? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't like to correct my boss, but that was the 42-year FDNY career. What did I say? NYPD. Did I really? But, well, you may have been in the NYPD, too. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think Hurricane Irene was just uh, an example of what the FDNY uh, does on an everyday basis. We don't only fight fires anymore. Uh, we prepare for medical emergencies, and the great storm prep on the whole city's part uh, was what we've done. We, we planned for uh, removal of people from hospitals, nursing homes, in uh, zone, all in Zone A in the entire Rockaways. And then uh, we went to work during the storm, and we're out there right now helping to remove the trees. Uh, we owe that all to our extraordinary firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, and the civilians that helped us to keep our rigs and all of our equipment and service. And uh, once Irene arrived, we went to work. So uh, yesterday, our members responded to over 3,600 incidents, many of them uh, 
were uh, related to the storm and then our normal day-to-day -day business. But the, we were out there. Our firefighters are right now cleaning streets, removing trees, uh, something that we've done for uh, the last few storms. As you'll see here, the members of Engine 166, uh, Ladder 86, Rescue 5, the 2-1 Battalion, our tactical support, were involved in the rescue. And we we're going to have a lieutenant that was there yesterday explain a little bit about it. Uh, this uh, specific operation that was conducted yesterday was the culmination of many years of training. Uh, after September 11th, we knew we had to expand into different areas, and, and this was one of the areas that we needed to do. Our Marine Division, we have a strategy out there, and part of our Marine strategy is not the big boats that you've seen us do many times, but some of these smaller boats that are out there, quick boats, speed boats, uh, and our swift water rescue teams that were deployed yesterday in, in Rockaway, in Broad Channel, and out in Staten Island. Uh, another important part of the whole operation for us was our incident management team, uh, which helped plan, starting on Thursday morning, what we were going to do, the events we were going to do, our logistics, and again, another event that was born out of September 11th when the incident management team came from the Forestry Service and uh, helped us for nine months to uh, plan our operations at the World Trade Center. And then we, re we deployed our incident management team down to Hurricane Katrina, so it was a little paying it forward. We're very proud of what we've done as a department in the last 10 years. Again, with the support of the mayor, with the support of the federal government, we were able to buy many, many different pieces of equipment that we deploy uh, regularly and very well. I'd like to uh, bring up Lieutenant Montalvo, who did the rescue, was part of the rescue effort yesterday. Just to say a few words, Gil, would you explain what we actually did? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Commissioner Cassano. Thanks, Gil. Uh, our initial response was uh, for a call for a fire. Uh, when we arrived, uh, members of 154 and Ladder 86 donned on their wet rescue gear and proceeded to find out if there was a fire. Uh, after determining there was no fire, we encountered high levels of water. Uh, the basements were fully flooded, and the water was starting to rise onto the first floors. Uh, we proceeded to call on rescue 154 and bring their boats, and we had started to evacuate personnel. Uh, the, the civilians were very cooperative. Uh, they helped our efforts immensely. We, uh, we looked upon our training, and we used our training to the utmost. Uh, going back to the civilians, they helped. Even the dogs, the cats, and the rabbit was helpful. <laughs> And everything, it was a three-hour uh, coordinated effort between all the members to my left here. And everything ended up being successful. Thanks, Bill. Good job. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Thankful, and one of the reasons I sleep well at night is knowing that uh, if something goes wrong, there are people like the members of these companies who are trained and uh, will respond. Uh, we are joined by many of the Staten Island electric elect elected officials, and I'd like to introduce some of them now, starting with Congressman Michael Grimm. Michael. Thank you very much. I, I just want to emphasize um, how proud we all are of uh, every, every one of the men standing behind us, but also mention that today's a special day that we get to honor them, but every day, Every single day, they're out there putting their lives on the line to keep all of us safe. And uh, I can just say uh, two words, and that's thank you. From the very bottom of my heart, thank you for, for your bravery, your commitment, and all that you do day in and day out. And I think uh, this storm and, and you stepping up the way you have based on your training just exemplifies, again, what you do on a daily basis that, that gives us the opportunity to sleep at night. So thank you so much. Um, rain or shine, one guy is always here on Staten Island, our great borough president, Jim Molinaro. Jim? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The mayor uh, referred to uh, blood donations that are needed, barely needed at this time of the year, but uh, after any tragedy that happens, there's always a shortage of blood. Borough Hall is in the process of a blood drive now, and we have one each year, a week before 9-11. And we try to collect one pint of blood for the 274 people that lost their lives in Staten Island. And last year, we were able to collect 411 pints of blood. 
So the blood drive is now ongoing. You can get the locations from my website. This year we have 10 different locations where it will take place. It will be convenient for you. One of them is the container port, so forth. Some of the colleges will have it there for one day. So we barely need that blood this year, more so because of uh, this, this tragedy. You know, every once in a while, nature tests our forces on Staten Island to see if we're up to what we're supposed to be doing. And although we planned, we planned very carefully and very wisely, but we expected most of it to come from the South Shore. This was a total surprise there. But the response was absolutely great. It was timely, it was experienced, and the results were outstanding. And I don't know if that little baby was part of it. Was that baby rescued? Was he? No, he wasn't, okay. I know they rescued a couple of infants, and that might have been one of them. So I want to say thank you for what you did. You over and above you're beyond of service, and uh, you know, it's amazing that eight and a half million people go to sleep, and they got only 11,000 people taking care of them and guarding them and being safe. So, thank you, and God bless you. Uh, Jimmy, thank you. Next up, State Senator Andy Lanza. Andy, thank you all. Uh, let me begin by thanking the mayor. In the hours uh, preceding the storm, uh, the mayor. I think we saw the value in having a mayor with. Uh, with the sort of leadership and extraordinary management and executive skills that we have with Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, the comprehensive plan that was put in place, I think, uh, put us in a position that we were uh, prepared for virtually anything that Mother Nature can throw at us. And I was uh, really proud to be part of the coordinated effort uh, at both local, state, and city level uh, that was put into place and the cooperation from our citizens, uh, from the, our hospitals, uh, and from everyone really coming together. And of course, no plan would be worth anything unless you had uh, folks like the brave men and women here in the fire department, the police department, the emergency services. I can tell you one of the things that was most comforting to me, uh, as I was concerned, as many of us were concerned across Staten Island, my family, my three kids, I live in Great Kills, uh, having water in the basement is nothing new, but uh, seeing, uh, seeing the, the fire department out there, the trucks crisscrossing Staten Island throughout that storm was something that I think uh, brought great comfort to all of us, and, uh, and especially seeing our citizens come together. Uh, when the chips are down and we've got a threat, uh, we're not Democrats, we're not Republicans, we're not independents or conservatives. Uh, we're all Americans, we're all Staten Islanders. We saw people really come together. And I hope that spirit does not subside with the onset of this beautiful weather out there. And again, I want to thank the mayor, the fire department, and the people across Staten Island for really coming together and, uh, and doing what we're supposed to do, and that's work to protect each other. Thank you, Mayor. Andy, thank you. Uh, the other half of all me, Michael Cusack, Assemblymember. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to I want to thank uh, thank the guys here at this house. You know, today we celebrate what they did yesterday, and we celebrate the successes. But all of us standing here know what they do every day. And as somebody whose uncle retired out of this house, I know what these guys do every day. And having served here for a decade down the street, I know every day they're prepared. And yesterday, they got to show all of us how prepared they were. And I want to thank you guys for yesterday, but thank you for every day protecting the people of Staten Island. I also want to thank the mayor and the commissioner and City Hall. Starting on Thursday, they prepared the elected officials as to what was going to happen. And we were prepared as a city because of the mayor, because of commissioner, because of all of the people at City Hall got the word out. They let all of us here know on Staten Island who to contact, where to go, what to do. And that all was implemented by the men, the men here, but it was their communication that led to this success, led to the success of everything that happened during that storm. And I want to thank the mayor, thank the commissioner, and thank everybody at City Hall for their hard work, and thank my fellow colleagues for the work that we all did here on Staten Island. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything. Michael, thank you. And last, City Councilman Jimmy Otto. Jimmy? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, given the fact that I've had a public disagreement or two with the administration, I think there's a uh, unique sincerity to when I stand up before you, all of you, and uh, tip my hat to the administration. I think that starts with Mayor Bloomberg. It runs through Deputy Mayors uh, Kaz Holloway and Howard Wolfson to the commissioners, to every city employee. It was a fantastic 
response. And those of us on Staten Island who are fortunate to represent this often forgotten borough are very appreciative. The City Council has 51 members and we're often criticized for having our parochial interests. And I'm proud to be known as a champion of this department. I think it stems from the fact that my brother has been on the job, was on the job for 20 years. Dozens of my friends are on the job. But it comes down to the fact that even as a 45-year-old man, I am still in awe of the fact that you guys go against human instinct, which is to leave the scene of trouble, run towards it, and help people. We will always have your back. We don't pay you by the fire. We don't pay you by the incident. We pay you to be there when it hits the fan. And you never let us down. Stay safe, and God bless. Well said. Jimmy, thank you. Uh, before taking questions, let me just try to summarize today's announcement for our Spanish-speaking New Yorkers. Uh, gracias a bomberos que res rescataron a uh, más de 60 personas cuando se unedaron las casas en este área del domingo en la mañana. Uh, también le damos gracias a todos los nuequeños que se unieron para ayuda a nuestra ciudad salir bien del huracán. And with that, we'd be happy to take some questions if anybody has any from the press. Sir. Media is on the 